Most iPad tips videos show you things like hidden features or settings, but not this one. This one's different. Today, I'm gonna give you real fixes for stuff that nobody talks about, but everybody deals with, not just tricks, but actual setup tips to make your iPad feel faster, clearer, and more useful right away. Also, you'll find a link down in the description to a free guide that I put together called iPad The Missing Manual. It's a PDF that honestly I could be charging for. It's full of so much useful information that you're not gonna find anywhere else. It's meant to make your iPad feel fresh and new again. It is super worth your time and it's totally free. You can find it linked up down below. A lot of people have their iPad set up right now based on who they wish they were rather than who they actually are. So most iPad layouts are built for the ideal version of you, like the super productive, perfectly organized person. And that's not really who's using the device today, most likely. The fix is really simple though. You just have to observe your actual habits. Like what app do you tap first each day? What do you ignore? Because your home screen should reflect reality, not goals that you feel guilty about. So a tip for you would be to go ahead and delete five apps right now right out of your home screen that you haven't used in the past seven days. And I think you'll feel the difference immediately because here's the truth that a lot of people don't realize, but your home screen is controlling you. Think about it. Whatever you see first when your iPad wakes up, that shapes how you feel and what you do next. So if it's messy or full of unrelated tools, then it creates micro friction for you before you've even started. So the trick is don't think in categories. The app library already does that for you automatically. Instead, think more like a dashboard. You got one clean screen with your most used, most useful tools, no folders, no distractions, 100% clarity. So my recommendation would be to rebuild your home screen to a single page with no more than six to eight daily use apps and just group by function, not by type. So treat it like your launch pad, not like your junk drawer. All right, non-obvious tip number three. If your iPad doesn't have a job, it's not gonna do anything useful. That's because a device with no clear role is just gonna sit around. So you gotta name it in your head. Rather than trying to use it for everything all at once, which is what a lot of people do by default, you gotta say out loud something like, this is my writing iPad, or this is my planning board. This is actually brilliant because when you give it a job, then it automatically filters your apps, your accessories, and even the way you carry it, right? So try to decide what your iPad is for and then remove or hide anything that doesn't support that purpose. It seems weird because Apple markets this as like the do it all device. You can do all kinds of things, but when you give it one roll, then everything clicks into place. Tip number four, if it takes more than a tap, one single tap, then you're gonna quit using it. Literally in the previous video, I listed a ton of awesome new apps you've never heard of before. And a lot of people went and downloaded those I know, but even great apps get ignored if they're buried behind folders or multiple taps. And that's because your brain defaults to speed rather than quality. So if you're tired or distracted or you're just moving fast, you're gonna miss it. So what I'm saying is the most used actions on your iPad should be easily reachable. So yeah, I'm talking about your dock or the corners of your home screen or the control center, not swipe three or folder two, but tap one. So my advice is take your top three daily use apps and move them down within thumbs reach either on the right or left bottom corner of your iPad depending on your hand. It's these sort of changes that save you dozens of micro decisions every day. Tip number five has to do with the Apple Pencil or just a stylus. A lot of people I hear are like, I just don't use it. Well, it's not the pencil. It might be your setup. It has nothing to do with, is the Apple Pencil good or useful or worth it? It's more about, is it hard to get started with? Is there friction between grabbing it and doing something useful? I've found that the key to not letting your Apple Pencil collect dust is to pair it with a single app that's there immediately when you turn your iPad on. No thinking, no navigating, just tap and draw or write or mark up. So you can literally make sure that that app, whether it's Good Notes or Apple Notes or something else, is literally in the top left of your screen. So when you detach the Apple Pencil, it's right there, tap, and you're in. Quick side note, if you use the Apple Pencil at all, you need to try a paper like. It's a screen protector that adds a slight paper texture, so writing and sketching feels way more natural. For me, the Nano Dots make sure that the viewing experience when I'm looking at videos or photos is very pleasant. They don't look obscured. And subscribers know I've used one for years because honestly, it's one of the few accessories that actually has changed how the iPad feels to me. I'm gonna link it up down below. Here's a key tip. I've found that split screen on the iPad really only works well when you set it up before you need it. That's because trying to build a multitasking setup while you're already deep in a task is chaos. 
So a lot of people kind of just give up or don't use it because it feels clunky, but it's just bad timing. It's not a bad feature. So I would say pre-plan the combos that you're actually going to use, whether that's notes in Safari or calendar and email or podcasts and journaling. What you shouldn't do is just improvise mid-session. Instead, design it once and then reuse it. If you wanna kick it up a notch, you could also use focus modes to preload your best app pairs. That way, when you switch back to work mode, for instance, or planning mode, then your iPad opens into exactly the right environment. Here's my final tip for you today, and it's a big one. You probably don't need actually a brand new iPad. You need a better iPad setup. That's because a lot of people assume their iPad is feeling off because the hardware is getting old. But I think in most cases, the real issue is likely the system that you built around it rather than the device itself. So the iPad obviously is partially great because it's so flexible, but if you never adapt it, then it starts to feel a little bit stale and old. I'm talking about adapting your layout or your tool set or your workflows. You know, a fresh setup can really feel like a hardware upgrade, but without spending a dime. So here's the thing, clear out your home screen completely and only add back in the stuff that you use over the last several days, maybe seven days. Give your iPad permission to evolve and it will. Now, again, I just wanna say, check out that free guide because I really poured a lot of time into it around that concept of how do you make somebody's iPad experience feel brand new, super fresh? Well, you can do it by several different ways. I've got things in there about mental models for using your iPad. I've got things in there for really practical stuff like your desk setup. I've got iPad user archetypes, for instance, like what sort of iPad user are you? You should probably figure that out because that's gonna affect how you set it up and the accessories that you get, etc. It's so deep. In fact, we go over like how to really think about the chip, the screen, you know, all the components. You're just gonna come away with a fresh idea of what an iPad even is, much less what it means for you, much less how you can use it and what you can do with it. Get that iPad guide, and I hope that you found something useful here. If you did, leave a comment and let me know, and I'll catch you in the next video.